many doors you've opened. So many ways you've made. So many times you've healed me. Hallelujah, you've been better than good to me. Hallelujah, we thank you, God. We thank you, Father. We thank you that we can declare that today. You've been so good. Hallelujah. Good morning, church family. Gonna ask everyone to um, turn to Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 22. Feeling a little Pentecostal this morning, so giving honor to my pastor, Pastor Prather, to all the <laughs> to all the ministers and friends and partners. Um Hebrews 10, chap, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22 says, Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence in this place, God. Reveal yourself to us and reveal us to ourselves, God, our true selves. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. Um, so just to give a little bit of background, Hebrews, um, the writer was writing to a group of people who were Hebrew, um, and they had converted, they had accepted Christ, they had left their old religion and they had accepted Christ, they had been baptized, and everything was going well for a while, but they began to be persecuted. And the persecution had gotten so strong till some of them went back to the law and others was thinking about going back, so he wrote this letter to them telling them, I realize, you know, you're going through these persecutions, but what you have now, this, this, this new covenant that you have is much better than the old one. Yeah. And so just to hold on, don't go back. And I can kind of understand, I think some of us can relate that sometimes when you, well, Brother Frank kind of got my opening, when you have um, decided to take a new step, to cling to something new, with the newness, there's gonna come some challenges. And sometimes if we don't really hold fast to the new and really um, understand the advantages of the new, we'll go back to the old. Not because we really want the old, but we're just tired of the persecution. Yeah. We're tired of fighting. We're tired of getting what we call beat down. So I'll just return because when I return, I know what I'm gonna do. I know what's going on. I'm familiar with this place. He was telling them that Christ he was explaining to them that Christ was the sacrifice and that they didn't have to go back to the old. In the old, they were, the priest was the one that was able to bring a sacrifice. Every year he would kill um, the animals and once a year he would kill the animals to atone for the sins of the people. And after that year, they would just have to go back and do it over again, and they was doing it every year. And he was saying, Christ shed his blood once and for all. 
So if you accept that, you don't have to do these works. And how many of us, we feel like I have to do works in order to be accepted by God? Because I really don't know who I am because my thoughts are, are, my thoughts are still persecuting me. My thoughts are still telling me you're not a child of God. My thoughts are still telling me you will never be able to live this life. God can't use you. Look at the things you've done. Look Look at who you've been with. Look at where you was raised. Look at who your family is. Look, you don't have the education. You don't have the money. And it begins to persecute us. To if we don't, if we don't realize what we're holding fast to, we'll return. We'll just give up. And when we give up those thoughts aside because that was the purpose of them in the first place to keep us in a place where we were and not allow us to grow they are persecuting thoughts and so he was telling them that um but in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year if we don't accept what jesus christ has done every year we got to go back and ask for forgiveness but because we have accepted christ that he has died for our sins once and for all we are his we are sons of god and we don't have to do any sacrifices we don't have to do works to try to prove our commitment to god because in verse 5 he was saying sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not but a body thou has prepared for me and so when i think about the um, people the priests doing sacrifices every year killing an animal and we know that the bible is really the evolution of man's consciousness from when they from when man fell Meaning when man came into a body, he was able to see his separation not only from God, but from each other. Because if we were to take off this body, we are one. We are only individualized by this skin. And so the Bible shows the evolution of them killing animals to um, Christ coming. And the picture that came to my mind was as they were sacrificing, and we know God is everywhere, but I'm just gonna use this as an example of the, the priest sacrificing every year. And the scripture says, God has no pleasure in our sacrifices and in our offerings. And I just pictured God looking at them like, look at them killing animals thinking that they're pleasing me, but I have no pleasure in it. I don't want the animal. I want to commune with them. I want to be with them. I want us to be one again. And so Jesus is like, prepare me a body. And so that let us know that before the, the man Jesus came down to earth, that the I am, the Christ, already existed. And so it looks like to me that the Christ has always been, yeah. but man's consciousness did not allow him to be able to recognize that God is everywhere present at all times. So God is here, but we cannot see him. So God said, Jesus said, prepare me a body, and God came in the form of, a, of the man Christ so that we would be able to see what the unseen was. And so Christ walked this earth to show us God. He was God in the flesh, and he was telling them that you don't have to um, kill animals anymore. Here I am, I'm God in the flesh, and I'm coming to tell you that God has no pleasure in those things, but his desire is to commune with you. His desire is for you and him to be one. And I know sometimes we use the example of, um, what's it saying, um, it, if we take one step, God st takes take two. But God is everywhere present. There is no place that God is not. 
So the, the goal was not for us to go somewhere to be with God, but the goal was for us is to go in and find God because God is everywhere present. And he was telling them, he taketh away the first that he may establish the second. So he took away that old, the, the Old Testament, uh, the law of sacrificing so that he could establish the second and the final, and that was Christ in us, the hope of glory. Yeah. And so in verse 17, he was telling them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. No, now where remission of these is, there is no offering for sin. So when Christ, when Christ came in the form of a body, he took away the sins of the world for, for us to, for him to remember them no more. Now our objective is for us to remember them no more because all the work is on us now. God is not giving us something that we cannot do. God is faithful. God is here. God wants to commune with us, but it's our own minds that keep telling us, I am separate from God. I got to do this to get to God. I got to be this to get to God. I got to offer sacrifices. I got to be perfect. I can't come to him. Look what I'm doing. Look who I am. Look what I'm wearing. So he was letting them know God has taken away every excuse. There is no excuse if you want God. You can't blame anybody else but yourself. You can't blame other people. You can't look at other people's uh, relationship with God and mimic theirs. It is a personal thing because God is in us. And so to my main verse, he says, let us draw nigh, nigh with true heart in full assurance of faith. So to draw, to draw near means to come close, to approach. And sometimes we feel like we can't approach God because of what we've done. But that is the main time where we need to go to God. We need to draw near. There is no excuse. There is nothing that we can do. He just told us our sins have been taken away. So now come and draw near. How do we do that? We draw near to come up. We come up in our consciousness. We realize that God is everywhere present, even in me, even in the midst of this persecution that I am going through. God is here. So what am I going to do? I am going to draw nigh with a true heart. That doesn't mean a perfect heart. That means a true heart, meaning whatever is going on in my heart. What other people may deem good, what, my, what other people may deem bad, what other people may deem perverted, whatever it is, yeah. God is not intimidated by it. And we can draw nigh. He said, whatever, come true. Hiding nothing. Come true. Come to me with a true heart. But also come in the full assurance that whatever I am going through, whatever I am battling, even in my mind, I know that God loves me. I know that God has chosen me. I know that God says I am his. So I'm coming with the full assurance that when I bring all of my stuff to him, he will receive me. He will not turn me away. Way. He will not leave me. He will not forsake me for all of my sins have been taken away to remember no more. Other people may remember them, but God will not remember them. You may remember them, but God will not. So he's telling us to remember your own sins no more. Come boldly. Verse 19 says, come boldly having having therefore brother and boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus come boldly to enter into oneness with God to enter into the Christ mind and that is what we were doing in praise and worship and in prayer I'm turning 
outward, I'm turning from the outward to the inward, and I'm going to a place in my mind where I know where God is because the Father is not a man sitting high looking down low, but the Father is the invisible part of me that is perfect and everywhere present and knows all things. So when I go to the Father, I'm really going to myself. And so that's why I have to go with boldness and I have to go with assurance because I know everything about me. I know everything I've done. I know every thought I've thought. So I got to go and remember what Christ has done. And when I remember what Christ has done, now I can go inward boldly because when the priest, when they went into the Holy of Holies, it was a 50-50. Depending on how they, their heart was, they may not make it out because they had these little, these little bells and if the bells stopped clinging, we know that priest did not have a clean heart and he was dead and you just got to pull him out and you better not even touch him. But so when I can imagine when they were going in there, just think about if before we come to church, before we walk through those doors, we got to make sure we got it all together. How many people would be here? I don't think, I wouldn't be here th today. I'll be, I don't know where I, where I would be, but that's a chance I don't want to have to take. I don't want to have to depend on my own works in order to be one with Christ. And so he was telling them, now I can imagine they were going in shaking and praying and speaking in tongues and y'all pray for me and everything else. But he's saying we can go boldly. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to think God is going to turn us away. We don't think that God is going to whip us or God is going to deny us. We can come boldly and enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. We can enter into the God consciousness. When they were being persecuted, he was telling them, don't run away from God. Don't run away from what Christ has done. Run to him. Draw oh, yeah, that's the title. Draw near. <laughs> draw near to draw from. And so go he was saying, run to God because God is the only one that can help us, meaning run to that part of me that is unseen but ever present. It is the Father. It is from where I come from because I didn't come drop out of the sky. The presence of who God is formed and pushed me out into this three-dimensional world. So I didn't leave God. I put on a body. I'm still who God has called me to be. And so that part of me, I just got to remember. I got to go boldly and remember, reconnect through meditation, praise and worship, studying. And I'm going to get to an, another way further down, but reconnect to my true self. Love on myself. Talk, tell myself I'm good. I'm worthy. I'm holy. I'm righteous. I'm all powerful. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because that is what the Father is listening for. When Brother Pruitt say um, God doesn't care about your feelings, God is looking for himself. That is what he recognizes. And he has given us everything that we need to go boldly to, to draw near so we can draw from and from and the things that we draw from him are spiritual things things to be able to operate in this world to be able to walk in this world knowing that when I come to a closed door, I can declare, so many doors you've opened, so many ways you have made. And so I can declare the words of God, and I can go boldly, and I can receive help, and I can receive grace and mercy in the time of trouble. 
And so he says, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of what God has already said. Yeah. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil consciousness. Now they would sprinkle the blood. Uh, they would sp um, sprinkle the blood of the animals to cover. And so we can go now knowing that our consciousness has been sprinkled with the blood. The blood represents life. So the life has been sprinkled onto our own consciousness. We no longer hold an evil conscience. We no longer think about what we've done in our flesh. We think about what God has done. And from that place, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil consciousness and our bodies washed with pure water. And we know that we are washed by the word of God. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. In times of persecution, whether it's inward or whether it's outward, hold fast to our confession. Don't let go. Don't let go of what God has already said. Unwavering, for we know that God is faithful. And that for he is faithful, that promise. Hold on to what God has already said in the midst of sickness, in the midst of situations, in the midst of problems, in the midst of financial problems, in the midst of whatever is going on in our mind. Declare that God is faithful because no one gets in, no one comes into this world without being tested but we have already been tested and approved of God so we can hold on to the word of God, hold on to the profession of our faith without wavering, being confident of what God has already said. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. So let us consider, these are the things when we're going through persecution, First, let's draw near to God with a true heart and full assurance of faith, knowing that our consciousness has been clean so I can go boldly. I'm not even thinking about yesterday. I'm not thinking about five minutes. It's me and God right now. I can go boldly to him, and I can go confessing what he has already said to me, expecting and hope with a hope knowing that God is faithful that, and that he has promised. And all also, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Let us consider. Let us think about someone other than ourselves when we're going through persecution. Let us consider our brothers and our sisters. Let us consider means like to pay attention, to really know them. Like when one of them will text me and ask me how my day is going, you know, outside of church, something to encourage me, something to connect to, because a lot of times when you're getting this kind of teaching, you really don't have a whole lot of people to talk to. And so when you are talking with your brothers and sisters and you're provoking one another, you're stirring up one another, you're considering one another, and, I, and one person, I hope they don't get me, who is a good provoker, Sergeant Cooper. <laughs> Provoke means, like, she studies people, and then she will put you to a test based on whatever it is that she sees. And so she considers me, and she says, you need to get out of the house. I want you to do this by this time. She is provoking me. She is agitating me. She is irritating me. But she's doing it unto good works. She's not talking about me. She's not dragging my name. She's not, you know, um, judging me. But she's 
provoking me, agitating me, getting me to move to do what it is God has called me to do or to do what it, whatever it is that she feels like, okay, that part needs to be developed because she don't like getting out the house. So when we, are being, when we are having our own troubles, let's think about somebody else. Because when we think about someone else, that means we're not worrying. We're allowing God to do his work. We're allowing faith to do its work. And we are um, helping someone else. And we know about the laws of giving and receiving. Whatever we give, we shall receive. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. Not forsaking to come together. When, we're, when we are being persecuted, yes, we want to draw nigh to God. But we also want to be in the midst of our family. We want to be in the midst of those who are going to speak life to us. Those who are going to help us understand, why am I going through this? Those people who understand why I do what I do, why I can walk around and declare the word of God, even in the midst of chaos. They're not talking about me, but encouraging me and understanding. So let us not forsake the assembling of ourselves. These people, they were being persecuted for real. Like their life was being um, endangered, like they could die. Not people talking about you, you know, not people judging you, but actually your life gone, being gone. And they still came together. He still told them, come together, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves as the manner of some is, because some of them wasn't, but exhorting one another, lifting one another up, and so much the more as you see the day approaching so much the more as the things that are going on, the things that we are understanding, the more we're understanding what's going on, the more we need to lift one another up, the more we need to draw near to God with a true heart, knowing that he is faithful, that has promised. So I just want to encourage us to remember the sacrifice that Christ has done on our behalf, not trying to do works, not trying to give offerings to keep from giving ourselves, but give ourselves to him wholeheartedly, not trying to give sacrifices and works to keep from giving ourselves, but give ourselves wholeheartedly to him and believe that he is faithful even in the midst of trouble because we're not excluded from trouble just because we are sons of God. So even in the midst when things are chaotic, I'm going to hold fast to what God has already said because God is with me at all times. God is in me. God is my father, not, a, not like a natural father. But God is me, the invisible me that cannot be seen, the invisible, the I am, the all that is, the one that holds all the things that we need, all the, the blessings that we need. God has already given them to us through his son. As we identify with him, we can draw near so we can draw from and then we can be a place where people can draw near and they can draw from us till they become a place where they can have people draw near to them and be a place to draw from where we can come and receive and then we can go out and give we can be Christ, in, we can be God in the flesh. We can be the one that God has prepared a body for. So we are as Christ is in this earth. So I just want to encourage us to, in the times of persecution, 
even when your own thoughts are persecuting you. We have a savior. We have the Christ consciousness that is within us where we can go to through prayer and praise and worship and study. And we can be in the presence of God because the presence of God is everywhere. We don't have to go to a certain place, but we have to go to a certain place within ourselves so that we will be able to receive. When the persecution starts, run to. No matter if you did it, run to God because God is the only one that can help us. He does not see us as we see ourselves. He sees us as he is because we come from him. We are him. We're still connected to him and we are one. We are one, but we are only individualized by this body. When we're no longer in the body, we are one in God. So I just want to encourage us to draw near so we can draw from. Amen. Stay right here. Do anybody have any questions for Evangelist Thornton? Because she said something. She said a lot of things. But do you have any questions for her? See, see, y'all, y'all make me sick because you should ask the question. And all that I get and get, she, she said a couple things that caught my attention. Come, basically, come with a true heart. Come as you are. You don't have to put on no airs. You, you, can't, you can't get it right and then come in. Amen. You come in for a completion. Yeah, and the purpose of, of sin, the purpose of the law, the purpose of it, the Bible says, is to show you where you are so when the Savior comes, you're going to know you need the Savior. But somehow or another, that thing got twisted and turned around. It's like, I, I can't fix it out there. I fix it in here with the knowledge. Your pastor can't, can't do it for you, right? I got to come pour my heart out. Here's the good thing. The sprinkling of, of, of the blood, meaning the nature. The Bible says it's the blood that blot out your, your, your sins. And sin is a, it's about a conscience. It's not about a behavior. You, you can only respond to what you think, right? Am I making sense? So you get to come and just throw up on God. He go through the, through the throw up, give you back what he, he's going to purify and say, leave that right there, don't need it. And then I take this right here, I, fit, I see myself in it, it just need to be purified. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So y'all don't have any questions. Thank you, thank you, Miss Irene. Come on, mama, what's your question? Mm hmm mm hmm mm hmm I know that's right. Come on, yeah. You do what you got to do. Come on here. And and I understand I understand that and that's what I love so so much about Mother Irene. It's like she said I ain't too old. 
she say I'm her, I'm her pastor and, and, and that she's willing to, to learn some things because it's not about age. It's just when he call you out of it and, and to, to draw near, to draw from. Yeah. And, and anybody else. Because it's like, I'm telling you, she said something key, that we come together. I'm able to come in here and say what's really going on with me and then not be condemned for it. But you're among people that's going to help. We, if we be honest, we'll say, child, I, some of that stuff, I understand exactly what you're saying. And even if I don't, it all equals the same, me trying to come out of it. So you, no more questions. Y'all got it. So if I ask y'all next week what she said, because you're coming here to learn, to develop, to go back out in the world and to live it, you, this is not a checkbox. That's the reason why we, some of us, not winning. It's like you, cause you keep choosing losing because you don't understand you. You came here to win, and winning is whatever God says regarding your life. It's not what you don't put up there. It's the, see, it's a different definition. Winning in the corner and winning in the spirit is two different things. Yeah. So she said some major, Evangelist Thornton said some major things. And Sergeant Cooper, been calling you that a long time. You keep doing what you're doing because Evangelist Thornton, evangelism, <laughs> Evangelist Thornton, evangelism is the ones that go outside in, in the streets, shake the trees and say, all right, all right, because they may not all come here. We don't, we don't, I don't count numbers. We, we just want to do the work. So, and I've been, been on her for several years. It's time for you to get out, you, time for you to be seen and heard and, and get out there in the streets among the people, get your team together so that you can go out there and evangelize, so you can go out there and encourage, so you can go out there and lift up, so you can go out there and pray for it, so you can go out there. And, and I've even told her, set it up and, I, and I'm coming. I'm gonna tie my hair up, get my tennis shoes on and walk the streets. Another evangelism uh, evangelist we have is, is Brother Prather. That's what he do. He's not an in the wall person. He's not, and I and I've learned that. He's one that get, he wants to get out and walk the streets because that's what an evangelist is. So maybe y'all need to team up and then get a team together and let's make it happen because they're not coming here. I mean, I mean, it's it's in, in it, you, uh, titles. Don't mean nothing if you're not working the title. And I'm not, I'm not talking about her, I'm just saying, period. <laughs> you, you gotta, if he, if you know this who you are, go on, you don't need permission. To, you don't need my permission to do his work. You need his permission. Yeah. I know if that's God when you come to me. Right. Or is that you want to be synced? <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. I'm telling you, y'all, we're on the brink of something. All these body aches and all these little different crazy things going on, I promise you, they'll be over after a while. But I'm telling you, don't, don't let them pass you by and pass it off as, and don't you keep passing it off as an attack. Can't, can't nothing handle a bear. You got to begin to learn and understand and not according to the definition that you already have. That's, that's how you keep coming up with error. We draw close to draw from. Like, I'm getting close to you because I'm, I'm coming just like I am. So, so great job. And, and I look forward to some, some outdoor activities. Although I'll be sweating and saying it's hard. <laughs> but I'm telling you because everybody is not going to come in here. And so that's the reason why he have all us. We all hit different corners of the cities. We all hit different people. And we want everybody to know that their life matter and that their life has purpose and that child you here with you here with with God got something he had thoughts of you before your mom and daddy got a hope to you and before your environment got a hope to you and before society got a hope to you and, and for experiences got a hope to you he had you in his hands 
And I'm, I'm talking about everybody. It, say it again, bro. Everybody. Yeah, so, so this is the reason why I want to have the conversations with you all, because you, I want you to understand. You'll, ne you'll go back and go back into the same routines if uh, understanding mean I have a knowing, knowing that the knowing, the knowing, and I are one, and this is me. And then I go, I go live it. So let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and we honor you for every vessel that's in this place and everyone that's on Facebook Live, that we understand that even no matter where we are in life, we can come to you with that heart and you fix it. We give you glory and we give you praise, God, because you have no respect of person. All of us belong to you. So we praise you. We lift you up. We glorify you. We magnify you. Why? because you are our Lord and you are our King. So we thank you for the lives that you have given us. Now live through us, as us, and in us, so that we make this mark on your behalf in this body. In Christ's name we pray, let every heart say amen. amen.